One of Tesla's best cars has a really big problem, and that's the Tesla is cutting corners and removing features that don't make any sense. In fact, Tesla's cheapest model, the rear wheel drive model three, is a shockingly good car for the price, but also so bad on so many levels, it is absolutely infuriating, and only Tesla and their poor decisions are to blame. Tesla is making some changes they hope you don't notice, but sorry Tesla because in this video we're going to talk about them. I want to talk about in this video Tesla's best offering, the rear wheel drive Model 3, why it is so great, what you do get, what you don't get, and features Tesla is removing and options uh, that you don't get on that car that really don't make a lot of sense. Let me tell you why Tesla is wrong and some serious mistakes they're making with one of the best cars you can buy today. And a huge thanks to Recurrent for sponsoring this video. They offer a totally free monthly battery report that gives you some incredible insight into some really useful data points on your EV's battery and tips on things you can do to keep it in tip top shape, but more on that in a moment. So before we get into the specific car, I think it's important to give a little bit of context because this car is very special in a lot of ways and has sort of a checkered history uh, in terms of its relationship with Tesla and its customers. So as of today, this car, the rear wheel drive Model 3, is the cheapest new Tesla you can buy. And with the base wheels, black interior, 18 inch wheels, and the free white or gray color, the car is going to set you back just under $50,000. It's like 47,000 ish, but once you account for taxes and delivery and transportation, you're at around $50,000 for the cheapest Tesla you can buy brand new from Tesla today. And for around 50,000 bucks or even cheaper, there's a lot of really good competition in this space. The lower end EV market has gotten significantly better in the last few years. And uh, a lot of people might find that this base offering, this cheapest Tesla, isn't the way to go and it's a little expensive for what you get, but it wasn't always this way. In fact, just a few years ago, Tesla actually had two lower tier models. There was the rear wheel drive Model 3 Standard Range Plus. I actually owned one of those cars and had an autopilot. It had all the creature comforts of a longer range or performance Tesla, but it had some big missing features. And then even cheaper than that was sort of the true $35,000-ish Tesla that was simply called the Model three standard range. This was a super interesting car because for a while it was an off menu item. Think about like your favorite fast food restaurant and their secret menu. This was on Tesla's secret menu. It was like an even more stripped down version of the standard range plus. So it had a physically smaller battery like the standard range plus and some other things, but it was even more software locked down. So you had less speed, you had less range. It did not come with autopilot, just basic traffic or cruise control was it but it was also cheaper at again around 35,000 ish dollars for a really good car. But as of a few years ago, Tesla is no longer selling the standard range Model 3 and have since rebranded the standard range plus, the car I own for a few years, to a rear wheel drive Model 3. So now you have the Model 3 rear wheel drive with a single motor, you've got the long range and performance variants as well. And after spending a good amount of time with the cheapest Tesla you can buy today, this rear wheel drive model, I've got to say I'm impressed in a lot of ways. It drives really well, it is fun to drive, it is sporty, it is smooth. You're getting an amazing Tesla experience on the low end, but also Tesla is still cutting corners in ways that I wholeheartedly disagree with, and they're removing features on this car that just don't make any sense. But instead of me just sitting here in this chair, let me go out, show you this car, and explain a little bit better about what you do get and don't get with the cheapest Tesla you can buy today. So if you decide to pick up a Model 3 wheel wheel drive, this is what you're going to get. This is a 2022 rear wheel drive Model 3 in black. It's got the black interior, the black exterior. This is sort of an extra uh, option uh, in terms of price. I think it's like an extra thousand dollars to go with the black. And if you're wondering what that looks like, here's what it looks like. And yes, a black car, even with Teslas, uh, is not immune to fingerprints and smudges. There's a great shot right there. That's why I'm a fan of the red. I'm partial to the red and not a huge fan of the black. But I will say, as someone who owned a uh, standard range plus model 3 basically this car back in 2019 i'll tell you three years makes a world of difference and this car 
is infinitely better than my standard range plus it drives really well it is sporty it is smooth it is quiet tesla has made a number of substantial updates and upgrades but there are still some downsides to this car and things you need to know so first off let's talk about a couple of things this is a 2022 model so it does still have the ultrasonic sensors there's one right there there's some in the back uh there are not uh going to be ultrasonic sensors on the 2023 models We've already seen photos of those new cars. They do not have those. Luckily, if you pick up a uh, 2022 Model uh, 3, they will still have them. And this is uh, basically the spec uh, with the uh, base 19-inch, 19-inch, 18-inch, the base wheels. I'm forgetting my Tesla terminology here. And also that black uh, exterior paint color. Now, one thing that is nice, Tesla doesn't include everything on their cheapest car, but they do have now a powered trunk. So I didn't know if this is going to be a thing. We first saw this on the Model Y, but now it has translated over to the three. And even on Tesla's cheapest model, you now have a... Uh, powered trunk that is very cool to see still no power on the front side uh, but it is uh, very nice to see that so let's jump inside and let me show you some of the good and bad things about this car like i said drives extremely well very comfortable and also you know, i will say pretty peppy after going from my long range model y to this um it you know still was very nice uh, but the one thing that i will say right off the bat that annoys me about this is this Tesla still does not include floor mats. Let me pause the music there for no copyright strikes. Um, they don't include um, floor mats in their cheapest car. So no floor mats here, no floor mats there, no floor mats in the back. That is still one of those things that infinitely irks me about um, uh, the cheapest Tesla, that they cut corners in some ways, um, which I'll get into in a moment, but also that's one of them is you don't get floor mats, which is really weird for a nearly $50,000 car, which is sort of crazy. I will say though, with that aside, if you look at the car on the outside, you could not tell this wasn't a long range model. Obviously you could get off for the bigger wheels and the performance has the bigger wheels, but there's nothing about this car on the outside that screams that it's cheap or it's budget. You still have gotta have access to the exact same paint options. You can get uh, the larger wheels if you wanted to, not the performance wheels, but the larger wheels. The only way you'd notice that this is a standard range is one, if you came in here and saw that, hey, it doesn't come with floor mats at delivery. <laughs> And also you'll notice on the back there is no dual motor badge since this is a rear wheel drive model There's a single motor you'll notice it doesn't have a badge on the back. That's the way you know that it is a uh, cheaper um, Rear wheel drive car. I will say that on the inside again You're getting all the same creature comforts as the more expensive Tesla So you've got um, this is the black interior with this new wood paneling here that they've done on the model Y uh, My car doesn't have this but this is a new thing now that sort of extends the wood trim over from sort of the center uh, of the vehicle over to the door. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of this, um, but it is there now on all Teslas, including this rear wheel drive car. And if we jump inside here for just a moment and I go wide, you can see the inside here, you're getting the full Tesla experience. All right, now before we continue with more on the rear wheel drive Model 3 and things I love and things I hate, let's get hate out of the equation for a second because I wanna tell you guys about a company that I absolutely love and that is a pleasure to work with. And that's a company that is giving you incredibly easy access to essential battery info, like the health of your EV's battery. And that of course is this video sponsor, Recurrent. And Recurrent is doing so many amazing things in the EV space, including a new option that I'll get to in just a moment. But one of my favorite offerings from them is this totally free monthly battery report that delivers these incredibly insightful insights, that makes sense, right into your inbox every single month automatically. It is safe, it's secure, super easy to set up in just a couple of clicks, and best of all, it's totally free. So by now, most of you know the basics. This is my Model Y, got about 7,600 miles on it, and my expected range these days is sitting right around 320 miles. Now this next module is super cool because this is my range prediction in three years. It's gonna be pretty good several years later. I can easily see the average market value of my car here at a glance with this nice little chart. And really cool here, I think this is a new edition. I can actually see that during the life of my EV, I've saved 133 trash bags of waste that have been recycled instead of landfilled. That is super cool to see. This graph here shows how my vehicle compares to similar vehicles in the recurrent fleet, doing pretty good. And this next module, 
module is a breakdown of my charging habits. And to minimize battery degradation, it's recommended you stay between the target zone of 30% and 80%, which I didn't do all that well of last month. Definitely some room for improvement here. Last two modules here, I can also easily see how far I can go with my current range on this nice visual map. And I can see how my range is gonna change based off of temperature, but that's not all. In addition to all this really amazing stuff in this totally free monthly battery report, Recurrent is also supercharging the EV selling process as well. In just a few simple clicks, you can get the value of your EV plus, also see your recurrent range score, which could potentially earn you even more money based off the health of your EV's battery. And then you can effortlessly get connected with dealers in the network who specialize in EV sales. So if you wanna check out this supercharged selling experience, or this totally free monthly battery report. I'll put links to everything down below so you can check it out for yourself and sign up. Again, totally free to do so. And I definitely recommend it. It's really cool to get these insights delivered to my inbox every single month. And also for those of you who are curious, this is US only for now, but trust me, Recurrent hears you, they see your comments, and they are working on some international offerings for you guys who are outside the US and really want to take advantage of these awesome Recurrent tools and features. So again, learn more and check out all the stuff for yourself today at the link right down below. Now, when you're actually sitting inside of the car, everything about this is just as you'd find in any other Model 3 or Model Y. You're getting the full premium Tesla experience. You're getting the same really nice 15 inch display. You're getting the same vegan leather on the steering wheel and the seats. You've got the same center console, built in wireless charger. It's interesting to see the ways in which Tesla has cut corners and what they've decided to keep and what they've decided to remove uh, in order to uh, bring the cost down of this car. Obviously, it's a single motor car. You've got less range right now at 69%. I'm looking at about 187 miles of range if you're curious, but you do have a glass roof. Um, same roof as you'd have on long range or performance models. And also you are getting the leather seats. There was some uh, rumors in the very beginning that Tesla's cheaper cars would have cloth seats, but as you can see, they've got leather here again. Here's another close up of that wood. Not a huge fan of uh, the wood. There are a variety of speakers all around the Tesla inside uh, in the front and the back that you can see you've got a speaker there. You've got some speakers up in the front. You've got a speaker here on this pillar and um, you've got sort of a, a full audio system experience and you've got uh, speakers down there as well. And I can tell you from my 2019 Santa Range Plus, it's the same thing as here. It's a little bit better, but still the same. The audio system is missing an amplifier and it's missing subwoofers. So not all the speakers are active. Um, I don't know if that's the case um, these days, but I can tell you back when I had my car, like this speaker, for example, it's just like a hollow thing. Like there's no speaker there, it's not active. So what that means is that the audio is very front heavy in this car. Even if you do some adjustments and you fine tune it, the majority of the audio sounds like it's coming right from the front here, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Music still sounds good, podcasts sound good, all that stuff, even if you're watching something on Tesla Theater, that's all good. But the main issue is that you're missing uh, the more immersive sound system and you're also which would include more speakers and you're also missing uh the ability to have some bass and some thump because there is no subwoofer you can go after market with those options uh, but it's not included here by default so something to keep in mind is that um the audio system is just not the same doesn't sound bad but if you're a big audiophile might be worth the upgrade because you're not going to get that experience here in the cheapest model 3. i should mention one thing you are going to miss which is super annoying is the charger this does not come with the standard wall charger you're not going to get any kind of charger with this car but something interesting is that you do get or at least when we took delivery of this did get the j1772 adapter and i think it is in here there we go just so i can show you what it looks like ah uh, so did come with the J1772 adapter just in this sort of plastic pouch here, um, but you do not get uh, anything else. So there was some confusion on whether or not that was going to come with the car, if that was part of the uh, charging kit. Looks like that is going to come with the car and it's going to be separate, uh, but you don't get any kind of wall charger. So that is sort of annoying. So to sort of recap, and to go back here as I kind of give you a shot of the car, what don't you get? with the rear wheel drive model three the biggest things you're going to notice 
is the lack of floor mats inside of the car, which is annoying, but there are plenty of aftermarket options. I'll leave a link down below. Honestly, in my Model Y, it came with floor mats, but I still prefer 3D mats, sort of uh, alternative uh, third-party uh, all-weather mats. Uh, you're also going to get a lesser audio system. You're not going to have an amplifier. You're not going to have a subwoofer, so you are going to get uh, a different audio experience. And you're also, these days with newer Teslas, you're not going to get uh, the mobile charging kit. Uh, obviously, it's a single motor, so it's a little bit slower. Uh, it doesn't uh, go uh, as fast or you notice that much of uh, that uh, speed as you would with other models. I will say, if it's your first electric car, it's going to be perfectly fast, perfectly zippy. And then the other big thing about this car that I should have mentioned a while ago, but I'm going to mention right now, is that this is an LFP battery. It's a different battery makeup, different pa uh, battery chemistry than in other cars. And the big thing is, what that means really for day-to-day -day use, is you can actually safely charge this car to 100% and not degrade the battery. That is not the case uh, with the 2170 cells and other Teslas, uh, but with this being an LFP battery, I think it does add a little bit of weight and does make it a little bit slower, uh, but that does mean that you're going to be able to charge it to 100. Oh, and also before I forget, a couple other things worth noting. Sorry for the sirens right there. A couple other things I wanted to point out before I forget, because there are some big upgrades here. One nice thing about this car and this was not always the case with the cheapest tesla you used to have to pay three hundred dollars to unlock the rear heated seats but now on the 2022 model and i think even on 2021 it is now a freebie so it's included with the car you can now uh do rear heated seats uh, for free that used to be a paid offering now it is free so again tesla is compromising on some things but not on others so that is nice to see and also a heated steering wheel yes uh, actually oh even i was something my, my model y doesn't have is heated wipers so you are getting both a heated steering wheel and heated wipers here on the rear wheel drive the cheapest tesla um which is interesting and also one other thing i thought was uh, worth pointing out is that on this 2022 model is that the camera quality seems to be a little bit better than my 2021 long range model Y, specifically on the side cameras. Um, obviously, you know, colors aren't great and they're sort of uh, going to be weird because they're not the uh, the new sort of upgraded uh, vision cameras. Te Tesla is rumored to be testing some uh, more significant uh, upgrades in that department. But I will say just in general, from looking at this, camera quality specifically on these two cameras does seem to be better than what I have on my uh, long range Model Y from 2021. So something interesting to point out is that you're getting some things. So I should say, not too bad, Tesla. You do get uh, the rear heated seats. You're getting the heated uh, steering wheel. You're getting the heated wipers, uh, but no floor mats. That's just something that is so weird to me. But anyways, if you're curious, um, that's uh, a couple of other little observations here on this rear wheel drive Model 3. Okay, so all that to say, I really do like this car. I can't stress enough how significantly better this is than my Standard Range Plus from 2019. It rides better, it's quieter, it's smoother, but I still can't get over some of the weird uh, quirks this car has. Specifically, the lack of floor mats is super weird. The lack of an audio system, the full audio system is weird. Now, obviously the dream would be that if Tesla was to take a dual motor long range car and just software lock it down, they lock down the range Maybe they software locked down to one motor and some other things, and then you had a more stripped down version, but then you could pay to upgrade and regain features. Like with that standard range, standard range plus, you could pay a few thousand dollars and upgrade the audio system. You could get more range. You could essentially pay to get more range. It'd be a great way to go. I understand it's not super practical and the cost of putting two motors into a car where they're not always going to be used. That doesn't make any sense. But I do think software locking things down, but having that hardware is a good way to go because then if you do want to unlock the full audio system experience, you can do so with just a couple of taps on your phone and not being sort of out of luck, which is the case right now. So I'm curious, guys, what are your thoughts on the state of Teslas right now, specifically the rear wheel drive uh, Model 3? I sort of started this channel on the Standard Range Plus. I know a lot of you guys have that car. And for those owners out there, what do you think? How's your car holding up? And for those who are looking to buy a Tesla, uh, does the rear wheel drive Model 3 pique your interest? Are you interested? in it yes or no let me know your thoughts down below to some of this tesla controversy as well as always i appreciate you guys watching this video thank you so much i'm robert rosenfeld and i'll see you all in the next one